Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I will show you how to create a backup of a database in C Sharp. In this video tutorial, I have an example database named ABC underscore store with one table named sales. Now, I will first show you the example program that I created to back up my database. This is how it works. First, create a folder where you want to save your backup database. I will simply delete the old backup database here. Then, I will copy the path of my chosen folder and paste it into my C Sharp program. Just add one more backslash at the end of your copied folder path. Now I will click the Create Backup button here. As you can see, it immediately creates a backup of my database in just seconds. Please note, if your database is large, it will take minutes, depending on the size of your database. That's cool, isn't it? Don't worry, I will show you how I did it, step by step. So make sure you finish this video to not miss anything. But before we start, Welcome to Kadev Tips, your ultimate destination for programming tutorials and all things code related. If you're passionate about learning to code or improving your programming skills, you're in the right place. But before we dive into today's programming tutorial, I'd like to invite you to become a part of our growing community. If you haven't already, please consider hitting that subscribe button below. By subscribing, you'll gain access to a wealth of programming knowledge and stay updated with the latest tutorials we release. So, go ahead and subscribe now, and let's get coding. To easily create a database backup using a C-sharp program, we need to create a stored procedure in our database. For those who are not yet familiar with what a stored procedure is, a stored procedure is a prepared SQL code that you can save, so the code can be reused over and over again. In other words, a stored procedure is like a pre-written set of instructions or commands that you can save and reuse whenever you need to perform a specific task or operation on a database. I will now show you how to create a stored procedure and how it works. Here you can find the stored procedures. In your database, navigate to Programmability, then Stored Procedures. As you can see, there are no stored procedures created yet. To create one, let's open a new query. I already have the script ready here, you just need to follow and copy it. I will explain it to you line by line. Make sure that you have selected the correct database. In my case, I will use the ABC underscore store database. In the first line, this backup database highlighted here, that's our store procedure name. Don't forget this because it is important and we'll use it later. Next, we have a variable named location here. It is the parameter of our stored procedure. I will explain its purpose to you later. Next, we have other variables here, path, name, date, and file name. I've added comments for each variable to explain their purpose. Next, set the variable path equal to our location parameter. Set the variable name equal to abc underscore store. Change this value depending on the database name you want to back up. Set the variable date to the current date but in this format. Then, Set the variable file name equal to path plus name plus date plus dot back. You can customize it depending on what name you want for your backup database. Finally, just follow this command to trigger the creation of a backup of your chosen database. Once everything is done, simply click the execute button. Commands completed successfully. We have successfully created our stored procedure. To confirm, go back to your database, right click, and refresh. Then navigate to Programmability, then Stored Procedures. And there you can now see the stored procedure we created. The next thing I will show you is how to run or execute stored procedure. Go to another tab or create new query. Type exec followed by the stored procedure name, which is in our case is Backup Database. Remember, our stored procedure has a parameter named location. To execute the stored procedure, we need to input the parameter, 
which is the file location where we want to save our generated backup database. Let's create a new folder. In my documents, I will create a new folder named my backup. Open the folder and copy its location. Go back to SQL and paste the copied file location. This will be our parameter, meaning our backup database will be saved on that file location. Let's run the script now. Click Execute. We encountered an error. If you also encounter this error, it means access is denied. This indicates that you don't have sufficient permission to access the folder you selected. Here's one thing you need to do to fix this error. Navigate to your chosen folder, right-click, and select Properties. Then, on the Security tab, grant access to everyone so you can add files to that folder via SQL. Once finished, return to SQL and run the script again. As you can see, we successfully executed the script without any errors, meaning, we created a backup of our database. Let's confirm if the backup has been created. Please return to your selected folder. And there it is. Now, every time you want to create a backup of your database, just execute this stored procedure again and again. The question is, how do we call this stored procedure in C-sharp? That's what I'll teach you next. Open Visual Studio now to create a C-sharp program. Create a new project. Go to Visual C Sharp, click Windows, then select Windows Form Application. Please add the following objects to your form. We need one button, one text box, and one label. Change the text depending on what you want to input. Once we're finished, let's add the code to our button. I already have the code ready here, just copy and follow it. But of course, I will explain to you how it works. First, hover your mouse over SQL connection, then click show potential fixes. Select the first option, using system.data.sql client. The first line of code creates our SQL connection. We need to establish a connection between our C Sharp program and our database. Please input your SQL connection string here, including your server name, database name, user ID, and password. The next line of code is for the creation of a command. The backup database highlighted here is our stored procedure name. Just change this value with the stored procedure name that you used. Next, for the command type setting, set the command to stored procedure. Next, this pertains to our parameter. Do you recall our stored procedure parameter? It's named location. Our text box one object is the one that will hold the value of our parameter. This means that whatever we input into our text box will be the file location where our backup will be saved. Next, this is to open our SQL connection. Finally, this is for the execution of our command. I added a try and catch block so that if there's an error in our code, our program won't crash. Use command.execute non-query to execute our command. If there are no errors, a message will pop up stating stored procedure executed successfully. If we encounter an error, there will be a message pop up stating error executing stored procedure. We have finished writing our code. Let's proceed to run our program. As I showed at the beginning of our video, please copy the folder location where you want to store your backup database and paste it into our C Sharp program. Just add one more backslash at the end of your copied folder path. Now I will click the Create Backup button here. As you can see, it immediately creates a backup of my database in just seconds. If your database is large, it will take minutes, depending on the size of your database.
Let's try one more time. Let's create a new folder. Do the same thing. Copy the folder location and paste it into our program. Add one backslash again at the end. Then click create backup. It works. Now that we're done, hopefully you've learned something from my video tutorial today. In my next video, I'll be teaching you how to restore a backup in our database, so if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please click the subscribe button to stay updated with my future videos. If you have any questions, just write a comment down below or send an email to me at kadevtips at gmail.com. Thank you for watching.